about it. So here I have. Uh, so that's it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you Thank for you. sending the invite. Thank you, Cindy. Wonderful to have you here today. Yeah. Thanks. Alvin, uh, can you please introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Alvin here, uh, partner in Alvin J and Company. We are the firm of practicing company secretaries from Mumbai. Uh, we have been associated with Raghu for a couple of years now, and uh, we are handling their, some of the clients' uh, secretarial matters. And we also assist in you know, forming this company. Thank you. Thank you, Alvin. Great yeah. to see you here today. Uh, Chetan, uh, do you think you can unmute and uh, probably introduce yourself? Sure, Raghu. Uh, hi. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Chetan Chirnali here. So I'm a partner with a uh, few of the angel networks uh, and I've been associated with Raghu for a uh, little over a decade like uh, Srinidhi. Raghu and I are good friends as well. And I'm one of Raghu's uh, consumer as well. I think uh, we are one of the few people who made uh, capsicum payasam at home. Thanks to Raghu. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chetan. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Naomi, nice to have you here again. Uh, uh, maybe a round of introduction from you. No, I think she uh, she's in Goa. The network is a little bad. The so. network is bad. Okay, okay, okay. Not mm -hmm. an issue. Uh, Sashi, we have a decent quorum, so we can probably start. I think there are a couple of people who are still driving and things like that, trying to get to a stable network. So they'll join as, as and when we are progressing. So this meeting is on record, so we can... Uh, uh, send it to them uh, subsequently. So, over to you, Sashi. All right. Thank you, Raghu. Good evening, everybody. My name is Sashi, Sashi Khan uh, As Raghu mentioned, I'm the uh, founder and partner in TechSota in India. And uh, I moved to US in 2016 since then. I've started multiple farming ventures here in the US. And here, uh, we are running a, the similar model that we're going to talk about, uh, a VBF Act Tech King as an organization. We'll talk about that a little later. So that's quick, briefly my introduction. Um, getting into the presentation. So see, you uh, can go to the full uh, the uh, presentation mode. Can you see this now? Uh, no, we still see the slide mode. Uh, yeah, visible. Looks like there is some lag there. Yeah, yeah, there's a small lag. Go ahead, yeah. All right, so I'm currently in the one of the farm and uh, the internet has, is not as good as in India. You would be surprised that in the US, in certain rural areas, you would still see the technology to be a little backward compared to India, which is something to be proud about for us and from India. Uh, so in terms of the legal disclaimers, uh, not to scare anybody, this is just to say that what we are presenting today is not an offering for you to invest. This is only an information. The actual offering would be in the form of proper formal documentations that you would all receive. Uh, in no way, what we're presenting should be considered as an offering. It's, it's a standard legal disclaimer that we talk about. And uh, general disclaimers, what you're going to see is not a quick scheme. The idea is to invest into farm, which is like a long-term investment. There are going to be loss. There could be 100% loss. And so all of us are getting into this as an investment partners. And uh, the reason why we wanted to put all these disclaimers, the, uh, the bad news up front is that we wanted to be clear that it's not any schemes that you generally would come across uh, that talks about invest this much, you will get uh, this much percentage guaranteed returns and all that. And while we said that, we have structured this model in such a way that there are a lot of safeguards. We are all investing our time, effort, and our careers into this. So your investment money is quite safe, but at the same time, it's an investment. I'll leave many of these points uh, for you to read, but then a few things that you need to understand is that there is a minimum five years of locking period for this investment that you're making. And there are possible losses that you would incur for various reasons, right? Um, that, that's the bad part that we want to just give it out of print, but we'll talk about the nice parts very uh, quickly. Uh, in terms of how we are safeguarding these investments is we have 40% of your investments, of our investments into the very good appreciating asset like land. And we have very good business plan on for the rest of the 60% to be highly profitable. Right? And at the same time, uh, 
there could be many, many reasons why things can go bad. And, and so uh, we're talking about this, this kind of upfront. Um, the same thing that we talked about, the reason why we want to put red, bold, underlined is for everybody to understand this very, very clearly. Having said all the bad parts up front, let's go to the best parts of it. The foundation principles of this entire organization is that we would run this with utmost effectiveness, with our experience, and we would be all out into the social media in terms of what we are doing, and except for any business IPs that we would have. And we would be quite aggressive in this farm startup business in terms of running it with the latest and greatest of the technology. We invest into the latest technology upfront to reap the benefits over a period of time. Because most of the situations is that you would start making money and then invest, but we would do the other way around. But at the same time, return on investment is a key factor that we would really look into before we spend a, a, a rupee. Right? And we would be extremely flamboyant in what we are doing. If you look at even the presentations that we make, we wanted to be sure we're not conservative in this. We are trying to be uh, uh, change the traditional farming business and bring it up to the, uh, like any uh, startups, right? So now not the technology startups are not the only ones that can be flamboyant. Agriculture business can be flamboyant. These are the foundation principles that we have. And this is our mission statement. We are quite ambitious. We would be 100 crore ag tech company in 2028. Right? That's our ambition. How would we achieve that? We would want to see in the, in the coming slides. Uh, some of the areas that we are investing into is investing into the farming, farmlands, which is an appreciating asset, which is an appreciating real estate asset. We would be investing into high-tech farming, color capsicum and many other exotic foods. Uh, we would be investing into the aquaculture, uh, a lot of uh, vertical farming. We will use IoT, artificial intelligence and machine learning based technologies. And on top of all this, we will also have a farmcation as an aspect wherein all the investors would be able to enjoy and have enjoyed experience. If things work out very well in this farmcation, this could be, become a business line by itself to take it to the next level. But our core from this particular slide is that we would invest into the lands that would appreciate, we would invest into the uh, farming business that is uh, producing high dollar value crops. Right? And why we do what we do? We have, we all have enough options to invest our money into different businesses and make money out of it. But we all are motivated with the fact, fact of farming to be something very close to our hearts and uh, growing food and uh, uh, providing food to the people is something that really gives us a lot of kick. And business as such is extremely high in this. We're not confused with the passion and so, we are not doing it just, just for the passion part of it. We were just for the passion we could do in one acre, two acres. Here we're getting into the large uh, farm and uh, we are driven by the passion with very really strong business foundation. That's the reason why we are all doing this. Uh, before getting into any further slides, I just want to take a quick pause for any questions in this particular mission. Because this is quite important for everybody to understand. You can always have questions on any of these disclaimers and legal disclaimers, et cetera. Shashi, I would like to welcome a couple of people who have uh, joined in. Uh, Kiran, uh, uh, Naresh, uh, welcome to the uh, presentation today. Thank you. Thank you, Raghu. Kiran, are you able to hear us today? No issue with your internet? No problem. Thanks. <laughs> Great, Kiran. Thank you. Shashi, please go ahead. All right. Um, Having said uh, about the business model, some of the reasons why we are looking at farm investments in uh, Karnataka, uh, everybody understands typical real estate investment is a good, safe investment compared to a few other investment options like your stocks, cash savings, bonds, and et cetera, real, uh, normal real estate, but farmlands is our view. So we feel that it's a low volatility investment compared to others. Very good fertile lands that are available in Karnataka. I come from Andhra, and we have seen the uh, the per acre rates back in Andhra. It's uh, absolutely uh, not affordable, and uh, the amount of raise from the current uh, price would be quite low over a period of time. But in Karnataka, I've seen that uh, we have a great possibilities of appreciation. 
Um, and uh, the proximity of lands that we are identified is very good with Bangalore and Mysore. And uh, because of the recent change in government regulations, it's liberal in terms of buying the land, especially in buying the land in the, in the form of private limited and having the shares model that we're going to talk about. And traditional investments have become quite low in returns with the, like AFD and highly volatile in terms of the stocks. That's where we see the land and farmland investments seems to be a very good uh, option there. And the, the registrations in Karnataka have increased by 67% compared to the previous uh, times because of the reform. So what we feel is that more and more people would enter into the uh, farmland purchase and we buying the lands could also help us with a lot of appreciations. And these are the, some of the success stories in AgTech. Uh, when we talk about AgTech, it's not just farming. AgTech is typically termed as any kind of uh, technologies being used in farming in terms of precision farming, IoT devices, and many other uh, uh, farm-based platforms to sell and buy. Uh, many of these uh, AgTechs are into that. So we have seen that over a period of uh, last few years, the trend has increased. And uh, if you look at 2020, we have $242 million investments into that. Uh, Raghu, can you elaborate a little more on this particular slide? Uh, sure, Sasi. So uh, this is the uh, uh, the broad uh, market size and the investments uh, that are uh, in AgTech uh, today, in the startups in the uh, AgTech space. So uh, as of 2020, October, there was about 242 million raised by various uh, startups in the AgTech uh, field. And uh, this has in fact uh, crossed 400 million as of uh, today. And uh, these are some of the prominent companies that I have highlighted below. And we are into more than one of these sectors. So IoT powered agriculture is one of the things that we are focusing on precision agriculture and uh, farm management would be the other uh, part of the agri-tech investment that we would be doing. And uh, uh, all our uh, uh, crops would be grown in uh, uh, hydroponics or eventually be grown in uh, hydroponics. So we have a nice combination of uh, multiple of this uh, successful startups. And uh, uh, we hope to, uh, I mean, uh, get the best of all these, plus the land investment that we are making. Uh, makes us pretty unique in this entire uh, ecosystem. Yes. Thank you. While we talked about why the uh, land purchasing farm uh, in Karnataka, here is about why precision farming. There are multiple ways of farming. Um, mostly you would say that in India, I would say less, uh, less than a percent or two max is into precision farming. So why did we choose that? Uh, precision farming in greenhouses is the best way to cultivate uh, high productive uh, crops, and at the same time with the high quality. Uh, precision farming is not unnatural. It's a way of protecting the, uh, the plants from any of the pests and uh, strengthen them at the core so that they fight the pests back. Uh, unlike in traditional farming where we have to really put a lot of chemicals, we uh, have a less use of chemicals in this. And so we wouldn't call this as an organic, we would call this as a safe food. And uh, we are also getting into the, uh, over a period of time, in a precision farming, we would get into the organic methods of uh, organic inputs. So with all these controls, precision farming becomes an important farming method. Uh, and so we are going to uh, streamline in that going forward. We will also use open farm, uh, but it, it, it's especially for tropical fruits like dragon fruit and the large trees like mangoes and sitafal, et cetera. But most of our focus is going to be on the precision farming. Uh, any questions so far? I'm open for any questions on the fly, uh, just to ensure that you know you don't have to hold on to your questions till the last minute. All right. So we also, on top of uh, precision farming, we would be utilizing the acreage that we buy. So not every inch can be built into a greenhouses, and so we are going to save certain space, and we would build few homes there. We're think thinking of about five. Uh, five bedroom homes, but in the option to be available for the investors to come in, stay there, enjoy the uh, farming aspect of it, the environment, and stay as a vacation there. And you would also want to have families come in with the children so that we introduce the farming techniques to the children because they, this can be a career by itself. So, this is where the concept of farmication, as I mentioned earlier, 
if the model is successful, we would want to open it up and expand this. But for now, we are going to use this for just for our investors. And maybe whenever there are opportunities available, if the uh, no, not investors are coming in for that particular week, we would open it up for the public and uh, make money out of it. This is one of, it's going to be a small additional revenue that we will have uh, within the farm uh, investments here. Like in any business, we have done a SWOT analysis of this entire method. So in terms of such trends, what I see is that as the founders and partners, we have good experience. We have over 10 years of experience uh, in gardening, farming with the latest of the technologies. And we have a very good hold in the Karnataka farm real estate. We have been on the ground. We went through uh, multiple locations. So we have a fair idea. And then now we have great connects in terms of uh, in the rural places for us to be able to get the right land. We have very good connections with the wholesalers for selling our produce. Uh, growing is one of the toughest part, but I would say in the overall business, it's one of the easiest. But then the most toughest would be transportation of those and then selling them at the right price. So our team, as a team, we have achieved uh, a good hold on to that by having the distribution channels, both in terms of uh, uh, value added, uh, uh, distribution and also the general distribution for the wholesale. And uh, we have very good expertise with farm operations, uh, product management and transportation logistics. And, and uh, that, these are all the strengths that we have. In terms of the opportunity, the area that we are getting into is precision farming. You would not find hundreds and hundreds of acres of greenhouse all around in even around Bangalore. You would see very less of them. That's a great opportunity. Growing capsicum, growing any of the exotic fruits in these high-tech uh, greenhouses is a great opportunity because a lot of people are getting conscious about food. They wanted to have the clean food. Money is not a problem for them to spend. That's an opportunity that we are tapping onto. And we are also collaborating with a lot of uh, new startups in this area like Zomato, Ninja Kach, and Udana. Uh, and we, we are getting into GAP uh, certified products. And so we will have a great opportunity for exports. So uh, having uh, me here in the US, we have our own uh, <clears throat> uh, agriculture startup here in the US. We are going to collaborate across multiple, both the companies back in India and here, and we would over a period of time look into export of markets. So that would give us the end-to-end -end of a uh, hold on growing and the last uh, customer sale. So that would give us a great opportunity for earning more money in this. Having talked about strengths and opportunities, we talk about the weakness. So any of these agri startups, especially the model that we talk about is capital intensive. And uh, the way we are mitigating this challenge is we are collecting capital from a multiple large volume of investors, but at a smaller capital amount. This makes it like a crowdfunding. So this is how we can raise multi crores and uh, invest that into the right business there. A lot of people may have ideas, a lot of people may have experience, but the capital raising is not an easier option. So that's where we have really uh, found out different ways to raise larger amount of capital from larger volume of people at a smaller amount of capital per, per person. Skill resource availability in this area is very tough. You can find thousands of engineers, software engineers, but you cannot find even five experienced had experienced growers with uh, experience in the area of precision farming. So we are investing our time and efforts into training people. Our strength is availability of uh, uh, our head grower. Sanjay has been on the ground. Raghu has been on the ground. Uh, collectively, we have very good hold on this area. So we're going to train more people. And a lot of these activities are something which we would automate. We would invest into the heavy automations and then ensure that our dependency on the people is less. But at the same time, the value on the people is extremely high. We would ensure that people are valued for our uh, work and uh, they grow within, our, uh, within the company itself. Threats. Natural calamities and wildlife intrusions are going to be biggest threats in this uh, area, especially the area that we selected. Uh, we are looking at insurance for the poly houses and also the elaborate fencing and trenches. This is how we're going to mitigate those risks. It's not that we are the only one who would be able to do this. There are many people who can do this. A lot of corporate farmings can come up, but then the model in which we are combining investments, ideas, and execution on the ground we find that to be a unique combination. 
and before anybody comes up and becomes like a big competition, we would be well ahead in the game. But as you would notice that in Indian economy, Indian uh, farming scenario, even if there are 100 more startups comes up, we still have room for everybody to excel because the food, the volume of people can, trying to consume high quality food is very high. So we would not have a biggest issue there. Uh, government regulations related to land acquisition by non-agriculture. This is something which is like a threat, but the worst scenario, what we have to be prepared is, Karnataka has liberalized farm purchase, farmland purchases to non-agriculturists and private limited companies. What if they reverse it back? So we still have methods of uh, resolving that in terms of uh, selling the land uh, and getting the money back. So we were working with the attorneys and uh, with the local law firms in ensuring that we are all very uh, safe on those aspects. Any questions so far on the SWOT analysis? For anybody who's investing into this, the slides so far are quite important. Please feel free to ask uh, as many questions as you want. All right, so we'll move forward. These are different lines of business that we're going to focus on. As I mentioned, we'll invest into farmland real estate. We will build a nursery in which we grow Seedlings. Seedlings are the plants that would finally get into the farm and grow into the final plant. And we will get into the agri-tech in terms of mobile devices, I IoT, AI, and ML. We will also get into the trading of the vegetable vegetables because having being the farmer, we have gone through end to end of the cycles. So we will also become the distributors in terms of uh, getting into the trading aspect of it. We will get into the value added products. So irradiation is one of the very important uh, industry that we are thinking because any uh, which table that has to go out of India and get into any of the foreign countries has to go through the radiation process. So that's an interesting idea that we will get into. We will get into cut vegetables and dehydrated vegetables. These are the value added parts. So these are the core verticals that we would be focusing on. The additional lines is the farm location. While we start with our own small farm location for ourselves, we would look into if there is a merit in getting into this business hospitality at some point of time. And uh, real estate. This is a TBD for now, but when we see a great uh, uh, opportunity available in this area to acquire the farmland at a large scale and then break that into pieces and then uh, register them into individuals. So we would look into the merits of this over a period and then take a call on to this. So these are the core verticals and the additional lines that we have. I'm pausing for a minute just to see if there are any questions so far. Can you explain the trading part a bit? Because it's quite a close knit, isn't it? Uh, yeah. I didn't hear you. Sorry, which part? The trading part. The trading, trading part. part. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Raghu. Please take okay. Care. So, uh, Srinidhi, the uh, what we over a period of time, what we have realized is there has to be some amount of control over the front end and where your produce is going. So it is not that we cannot. We can definitely. Uh, not uh, uh, come out of the uh, wholesale, retail, and uh, the B2C, B2B kind of an ecosystem. That's something which is very integral to our uh, this thing, uh, our entire uh, produce being sold. At the same time, there are uh, there could be unique opportunities which we could uh, explore because of the uh, trading option. Like for example, uh, export is a huge potential, right? So. If we are looking to export, it makes sense for us to go to the end consumer in whichever country that we are planning to export. So similarly, even in India, uh, so uh, there could be opportunities where we become the back end for some of these large uh, B2C uh, suppliers and B2B uh, suppliers. So that's something that uh, we can get into easily. And because of our current experience in the entire uh, field and then talking to a lot of people, we already have the contacts to get into this field. And in fact, we have done a small pilot as well last year, wherein we tried uh, uh, getting into the B2C and B2B markets. So that potential is something that uh, is available for us to exploit in future. Okay, okay. And, so uh, talking... Yeah, go ahead, sorry. So, so we are not talking about uh... I mean, I don't know. I mean, export is one thing. Yes, definitely good. But uh, hopefully, I don't know. Are we talking about selling it in the mandis also? 
no 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 so uh, the thing if you look at the uh, first uh, area that we are doing right the farming part of it we are clearly going to be in the exotics uh, space so exotics in india are your uh, color capsicum or your bell pepper broccoli leafy green specialty tomatoes and things like that oh. these are never sold in the mandi so these I are specialty the products yeah 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 that we will never get so you can be assured i mean we had experience in that as well selling in the mandi that we will never get into <laughs> Got it. Got it. Okay. Go ahead. Shashi. Yeah. All right. So, um, yeah, Raghu, can you take this one? Sure. So this is the land that we have identified for the uh, project. So the land itself is uh, very near to Nagarhole. If uh, uh, most of us will be familiar with the King Sanctuary in uh, Nagarhole, Jungle Art, just King Sanctuary in Nagarhole. So just Three kilometers before that, uh, so this is about fifteen point six acres of uh, land, and uh, it comes under the uh, Bharatwadi village uh, under the Hunso Taluk in uh, Mysore. It's just about hundred meters from the main road, the Nagarhole main road. Um, it's uh, already fully fenced. Uh, there are three bore wells with uh, very good water, and the soil is excellent. So they have, uh, I mean, the previous. Previously, they were going uh, growing uh, banana in the same uh, land, and they got excellent yield. And uh, there is excellent red soil. Of course, this is something that we need to decide whether, uh, because primarily we are looking at hydroponics. But if there is potential to uh, work on soil for the first few years, we might do that and then move to hydroponics if required, because the yield in soil can be much higher compared to hydroponics in the initial years. Uh, so there is excellent connectivity from uh, Bangalore and Mysore with the Bangalore Mysore Expressway in progress, and hopefully uh, by October is what they have said that it will be ready. The travel time reduces uh, significantly, uh, but as of today, it is still uh, connected very well to Hunsur and uh, Mysore. Uh, and the uh, another interesting part of it and our source of inspiration for the farmication is also. It is close to many tourist attractions. So you have the Nagarhole Tiger Reserve. There is a Tibetan settlement and a monastery there. You have all the Mysore-related uh, uh, tourism uh, areas like your KRS, Brindavan Gardens, uh, Kurg is en route. So there is a huge potential for uh, tourism and farmication. But uh, like Sushi said, that's uh, more of an ancillary thought process, more uh, because of the location than uh, anything else. And the biggest thing for us operationally is this is only about half an hour from our existing uh, greenhouse project. So many of you have been to our current farm. Uh, so this gives us uh, leverage to uh, work on the farm on a regular basis, use the expertise on, of our existing farm uh, in this uh, venture. So we'll leave this slide for uh, uh, a few seconds so that uh, you can digest the information over here. All right. And yeah, the price, uh, so we have negotiated it uh, currently for 15.5 uh, lakhs an acre, which comes to about 2.5 crores. The land holding is about 15.6 acres. Uh, and uh, the uh, it would be registered at about 2.5 crores. Shashi? Yeah. All right. So in terms of the utilization of the said land, we will have eight acres of poly houses in that, in that land. And uh, we will use four acres for agroforestry in terms of open farming. We'll have a cow shed and Jeevamrita preparation and pumping stations there. Uh, we'll also build the labor houses, uh, wherein a, we will be able to ho uh, house about 20 people there. Um, and we will have the transformers and storerooms and all of them in this given land. Uh, we will also have the rainwater harvesting and uh, uh, retention ponds. Uh, we would save every bit of the water, and we'll have the roads and utilities in the uh, and solar unit in the other in the utilization. And uh, we'll also have a housing for a five BHK homestay, and we'll have uh, for the operating team there. So this is how the entire fifteen point six acres would be utilized. Uh, the primary income you would get from eight acres of poly house, and the secondary income would be from the rest of the uh, aspects of it. 
We are also structuring this entire uh, land for future growth. At any point of time, if we have any new ideas, we should be able to operate it in this. Here is our experience. Um, we have, currently we have four acres of uh, hydroponic grown capsicum being uh, grown in the uh, Hamsur area. And uh, this is our current address of, uh, this can be kept into the Google and you find the actual location. We have been running this four acres since 2017. We are growing color capsicum, we have grown uh, uh, um, uh, cucumbers and a few others, but then color capsicum is our, our flagship product. And we have a very good, strong team on the ground with experience in executing this farming. We have built up the poly houses from the beginning and uh, uh, we have invested into uh, highly automated fertigation uh, of a fertigation units that would help us handle the fertigation uh, automatically without the human intervention. And uh, we have used completely hydroponic material. Uh, we are out of the soil and uh, we are able to achieve a lot of production with this. And we have worked with multiple vendors. We had issues with different vendors. We figured out ways to solve that. We have the contracts. We are able to negotiate and we are able to ensure that we get the money back in the right time. And uh, this has been our experience. We have gone through serious ups and downs. In the beginning of the uh, farm setup, when we had severe issues with the virus, we figured out the ways to handle that. We had issues with uh, humidity. We had issues with many aspects of it. Uh, after spending four years in this, we are able to easily handle any of the situation. That's the confidence that we have and that's the experience for our project. And uh, you see the team here. On the left is Misashi. We have Sanjay, Raghu, and uh, Mr. Adhishesh here. And uh, on the bottom right is what you see is our farmhouse, the pond. This is the view from our farm house, farm farmhouse. And on the left is the overview of our farm, the four, total four acres. And uh, this is inside the poly house. And this is how we grow in grow bags. It will be very interesting to see how the plants are growing in that. Any questions so far uh, about uh, our existing farm? All right. Uh, this is a snapshot of VVF Actec Inc. VVF stands for Vallambari Farms. That's my family name. Uh, I moved to US in 2016. And uh, since then, I've done multiple ventures here. And uh, the current venture that I'm into is a large, exactly the same model. So we are structuring the India venture based on the US model here. Uh, we have over 81 investors so far. We have raised $3 million in the matter of five months. We have invested into these three properties. It is a 30 acre property in Lake Wells, Florida. We are completely into Florida. 100 acres in uh, Florida in Fort Pierce. And uh, this is the 34.65 acres of greenhouse facility in uh, Okeechobee. All these farm investments have been done with the investments raised by the, uh, by the investors there. Uh, so we are targeting to raise 6 million by in 2022 by end of this year in the next coming few months and with a valuation of 10 million. Our next year target is to raise 4 million. So this is the type of that we need to change. 4 million uh, with a 20 billion valuation next year. How do we calculate all this? Because each and every farm has a positive cash flow. We have existing production that's coming in and we have uh, greenhouses growing cucumber here and uh, we have a tie up with Walmart wherein every Grade one cucumber gets sold into that. So we're going to expand on that. And our land was that we have purchased with $13,000 in the month of February. Today, in the next, just in four months, we, it's raised up to $60,000 because of the real estate value, the, the city moving into these areas, and a lot of real estate vendors looking forward to buy this. So this is how we are able to raise the value of it. This is how all of our investors are making money within the first year itself. We have structured Indian. Uh, venture exactly in the similar models. We will be focusing in the similar ways here. And uh, apart from cucumber, we would be growing a lot of Indian uh, tropical fruits. Sitapal is a big thing in the, in the US. There's no way we can get it. Some things that we take it for granted in India is, is like a, uh, a big delicacy here. Um, getting the right mango is not easy. Uh, we get mangoes imported from India. Not all of them would be at a great quality. So we a uh, lot of focus on growing locally and selling at a premium. 
you'd be surprised that one mango was sold at 700, close to 800 rupees. And we were fortunate to get a lot of mangoes for the price. Uh, the quality of the mangoes, what we're growing is extremely high. Uh, we're looking at various ways of uh, growing them in the right technologies. So we hope to make a large amount of business out of this venture that we have here. And these are the Sitafal trees that we planted. We bought four-year-old trees. We moved them over uh, 200 miles and then transported and then transplanted them. So we're going to get money out of them this year itself. We use a lot of technologies to uh, plant trees here. Uh, there is a lag, uh, Shashi, in the video. Okay, I'll skip the video. Ah, yeah. So, the bottom part, this is how we transported the trees, and uh, this is how we use the augers, heavy equipment to uh, ease the work. This is how we use, this is the machine that we use to hedge them. They, all the trees, we try to keep it at uh, under eight feet, and uh, these are the machines that would help us. We use a lot of uh, local support, and we have the crews that we have created that would help us with uh, the installations. We have management teams who would help us managing the whole farms. We hire the head growers and everybody local here so that we have the strength there. Uh, any questions so far about our uh, company here in the US? All right. Uh, back to Indian farm. <clears throat> this, this is the structure of our organization. Um, all four of us are going to be an operation team. At the same time, we are part of the board and we are looking forward for getting two members from the investors as the board members here. So this would create the end to end of the uh, farm with the governance and all, all aspects of it. And uh, each of us have skills in different areas. I've been into uh, IoT devices and uh, high tech farming. Mr. Raghu has been a uh, chartered accountant. He's very strong with marketing and uh, finance. Uh, all of us by default have a core expertise in farming. So Sanjay is our uh, partner head grower. He's the man behind the setup and every aspect of it uh, along with Raghu uh, back in India. Adhishesh, industry veteran who comes with a lot of business acumen. Uh, he's been on the ground. We are also making him uh, to become a farmer there. So he's, he's, uh, he's a great support for us. So with this team, with additional directors, investors, we will farm a very structured uh, uh, company with a, with a good governance and compliance. While we factor in a lot of technology, sales and everything, we wanted that company to be extremely transparent. We wanted to be very investor friendly. We wanted everybody to make money while we all fulfill our dreams here. And we have support services from Big Sprout and Alvin and J Company, uh, accounting and compliance here, and uh, the company secretary services. So we will be adding up our uh, more and more services uh, in this area, and we'll update this slide. Any questions on this? All right. What is uh, Shashi? Just a minute. Yes. Yes, indeed. Right. So, so, I mean, I mean, the discretion. Uh, would you be explaining that later, or did you what do that? The Sorry? two directors from the preference uh, shareholders. What is the criteria? Oh, right. So we will be publishing the criteria, and then we'll make it open so that you know, while selecting the two directors, uh, everybody would know how we are selecting them. Okay. Okay. Can you take this, please? Yeah. So this is the uh, this is our uh, project milestone. So we are uh, this is just the beginning, right? So this is the round one where we are uh, just incorporated. We we are in the process of incorporating the company and uh, registering the land. So uh, we are looking to raise the first round. That is the round one A of uh, three crores in uh, June. That is the current month. Uh, in August, we have uh, scheduled the land registration. Uh, this is the Nagarhode land which we uh, spoke about. Uh, by November 2022, we'll have the first set of uh, uh, two acres of polyhouse plus, plus the required infrastructure and equipment. Like uh, the infrastructure is typically your labor rooms, your fertigation rooms, the fertigation equipment, pipelines, uh, etc. 
uh, in February of uh, 2023, we'll add four more acres and we will start the process of GAP certification. So GAP is good agricultural practices. So that is critical for your exports and uh, uh, ensuring high quality produce and higher value of uh, produce eventually. Uh, in May 2023, we'll add uh, two more acres of polyhose plus add the uh, five, uh, construct the five acres uh, homestay, uh, oh, sorry, five uh, BHK homestay and uh, add the uh, solar plant. So by 2023 May, we should have uh, the closure of the first round of uh, uh, projects. Uh, in 2025, we are uh, looking to start the second round of uh, investment. So this is Again, uh, a new pro new project, when I say new project, a new land, which we are looking at closer to Bangalore. Uh, and uh, this will be primarily again for uh, running a, a high-tech uh, uh, the agriculture. So we'll build uh, a 10 acres of polyhouse plus a nursery. Nursery is a very interesting business and a highly profitable business, but we need to be closer to Bangalore uh, for logistical reasons when we start a nursery. Uh, May 2026, we plan to close the round two finance. So round two, we are looking at raising about 15 crores. And round three, we'll start uh, sometime around 2027. And 2028, end of 2028 is when we are looking uh, at a potential exit for the round one uh, investors. By that time, we will have close to about 28 acres of uh, polyhouse across uh, about uh, 35 acres of uh, land in uh, three pieces. So this is broadly the project milestones. So uh, any questions here, uh, uh, welcome. Uh, Raghu, sounds good. Uh, you know, this typically sounds like uh, an EIF plan for uh, agri, uh, right? Uh, technically any EIF is also for Five plus one plus one, which is gone by SEBI. Yeah. So just want to check, uh, uh, you know, uh, is there a possibility to, to get into a kind of a regulated business where uh, SEBI would encourage uh, agri-related EIFs? Uh, that's definitely a possibility because, I mean, the kind of investments that are coming in right now are more on the agri-tech front. So the moment we see any of these uh, companies uh, becoming unicorns and things like that, there'll definitely be a lot more uh, thrust towards uh, uh, various other funding options for uh, agriculture. So one of the biggest thing in agriculture is because we are uh, buying land and we are into agriculture, FDI is not uh, permitted in agriculture, either directly or indirectly. So that is, that is a restriction that we will have. So we have, we have to right now uh, look only at uh, Indian resident uh, investors. Got it. Thanks, Raghu. Appreciate it. Thanks, sir. And Raghu, how is this uh, investment uh, design? Uh, so that we will come to in the next stage. Uh, but broadly, it will be preference shares, uh, uh, the compulsory convertible preference shares uh, logged in for five years. So yeah, OK. So this is the funding model. This is the next uh, slide. So in the first round, we are uh, raising 12 crores in four tranches of uh, three crores each. So investment will be in the form of uh, compulsory convertible preference shares of six years uh, tenure. Uh, round 1A will be uh, for three crores in uh, June, July, 2022. B will be in September, October, 2022. December, Jan, 2023 will be C and uh, will close the round in March, April, uh, 2023. And uh, 25, 26 will be, uh, we are raising 15 crores and uh, 27, 28, we are raising uh, 18 crores. So this uh, initial 12 crores, uh, as founders, we are retaining a sweat equity of about 40.5%. Uh, and uh, the remaining uh, uh, is uh, in the form of uh, preference shares, uh, convertible preference shares, which on uh, conversion would look uh, something like the table that I have uh, mentioned over here. So the first round of investors will come at par that is 100 rupees per share. The second round of investors will come at a 5 rupees premium, third round at a 10 rupees premium, and the fourth round investors would come at a 15 rupees uh, premium. Okay, thank you.
I think we'll leave this slide on for a few more seconds so that uh, if there are any more questions, we can. Naresh, do you have a question? Uh, yeah, Raghu, on the premium, uh, on the future uh, areas, you have kind of uh, arrived at now itself or it is going to change later on? Uh, so for the first round, we have arrived at the premium. That is the first 12 crores, we have arrived at the premium. premium. Mm -hmm. For the second mm -hmm. and third rounds also, there is an indicative chart which uh, we'll show you in the next uh, slide. But that would be more of an indicative uh, slide because, uh, yeah, so this is the round two and round three, what we are planning to raise. Uh, so round two of 15 crores, we are looking at a valuation of about, so the current valuation is uh, at, uh, we are raising money at uh, 20 crores uh, valuation. Uh, the second round we are uh, planning to raise at uh, 50 crores valuation and the third round at 100 crores uh, valuation. This is our uh, plan as we go ahead. Uh, so this is the indicative table which tells you what could be the premium at uh, various rounds and uh, various uh, times. Okay, Rahul, got it. Yeah. Can you go back? Go back to the previous one. Uh, Shashi, previously. Yeah. And how would be the exit for the first round investors? Valuation ah, so timing. So there is a, uh, so uh, what we are, uh, that will, uh, that we will talk about in the next slide. Uh, so what we are uh, saying is at the end of 2028, we are looking at a valuation of about uh, 100 crores for the company. So there are various ways in which we can uh, look at exit. So we have a slide for that. So as to what are the potential modes of uh, exit for the investors. Uh, Naresh, you have any questions on this? No, no, no oh, that's it, that's it, that's it. You can move on. Thank you. Shashi, the next, uh, yeah. Uh, no, the, the previous slide, I think, we'll wait for a couple. This one, Raghu? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Sanjay, sir, the uh, premium that we are, the uh, share value at each uh, stage, right, would give an indicative value of the shares for the existing investors as well. So uh, like for example, round 2A in uh, 2025, uh, March if I'm right, uh, would be we are, we, are, we are raising it at uh, 125 rupees per share. So the people who have come in at 100, you can uh, uh, say that the valuation is about 125 in uh, 2025. So in between, during this six years period, there'll be no returns on this. Yes, uh, there won't be any financial returns on this. That's right. Yeah. 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 And is my understanding right that uh, most of the incomes in this plan, what you have just now discussed, what Shashi has explained, yeah. it will be an agricultural income for the company? Uh, yes, sir, that's true. It will be agricultural income except for the homestay part. Uh, which yeah. will be homestay home or it will get into trading or the agri-tech sales. So those parts will be taxable, of course. So Right, right. Yeah. Right. Okay. But predominantly, 90% uh, of the income would be taxed. Right. Yeah. Yes, 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 you can. Thank you. This one, Raghu? Yeah. So this is the uh, projected financials for till about uh, 28, 29. This is in rupees lakhs. So for uh, uh, so there is something that I need to highlight over here. Like for example, uh, the sale of produce, right? So we have been uh, pretty reasonable in uh, estimating what could be the potential uh, sale figures or the rate per kilo of uh, capsicum and what could be the uh, yield per acre. Right? So this is uh, what uh, we believe is a very realistic uh, figure considering. So we are currently averaging around 75 rupees uh, per kilo uh, in terms of the color capsicum sales. So in this projections, I have taken about 66 uh, rupees uh, per kilo as the uh, capsicum rates. 
but uh, the industry is very volatile so we could like we discussed in the first few slides uh, there have been cases where during the especially during the covid period the rates went down to even uh, 7 rupees and 10 rupees per kilo but we were able to sell every kg of the uh, produce that uh, we uh, harvested uh, from the farm so that's something that uh, tells a lot about our network within the uh, uh, wholesalers and the uh, uh, buyers of uh, capsicum. And when it comes to the cost of goods sold, each of these are, uh, in fact, very unique IPs of uh, Tectota. Like, for example, the way we uh, raise the seeds, the substrate, or the substrate is basically the medium that we use for growing. The uh, mix of the medium that we use for growing the agricultural inputs that we use both for growth and protection. So these are things that we have experimented a lot over the last four or five years and uh, developed it into a sort of a ideal kind of a, a setup. So uh, these are some of the broad figures that uh, uh, we are giving you for the next five years. So if you look at the gross margin from uh, our agri operations, we are looking at about 61% as the uh, gross margin. Uh, like we mentioned earlier, farmacation is a minor product or ancillary product that we are looking at. There, the we are estimating the gross margin to stabilize at around uh, 14%. And after the indirect cost, we are looking at an EBITDA of about uh, 49 to 50% uh, overall over a period of uh, five years. So uh, this we'll uh, leave this slide open for uh, discussion or uh, questions. Raghu, your yes, exist existing buyers from your form now, yeah, do they have the potential to buy the produce of the proposed uh, site? Absolutely, absolutely. So in fact, uh, we are talking to them to uh, uh, for a greater, uh, I mean, to consolidate all the produce and sell it because that gives us a lot of uh, leverage uh, combining the produce from our existing farm and the uh, new farm. So typically, uh, since we are in a niche market of exotics, uh, so there is a huge demand and uh, you can have up to even uh, 100 acres of polyhouse and grow uh, specialty products for the market currently. There's a huge uh, supply shortage uh, and a lot of demand for uh, exotics in India currently. Who are your top two or three buyers? Uh, so right now we are uh, selling to a company called Ira Farms uh, based in Bangalore. They in turn sell it to modern retailers and the uh, uh, the wholesalers in uh, multiple regions like Delhi, uh, Mumbai, and other places. Uh, we are also in talks with uh, the uh, new age uh, uh, agri startups like uh, uh, wholesale startups like your Zomato, uh, Ninja Cart, and Rudan. So hopefully we should uh, uh, sign up with one of them shortly. Uh, that will give us a lot of stability in terms of um, uh, uh, assurance and stability in terms of our uh, sales. And how are the payment terms with these buyers? Uh, most of them, most of the payments are within uh, two or three days, maximum one week. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thanks. Yes, yes, move ahead. Yeah, so these are the indicative uh, cash flow numbers. So uh, we, it is extremely profitable. So uh, going by a realistic projection, we should have a significant cash reserve uh, by 2027, 20, 28. Of course we need to, so this could potentially mean uh, either uh, a po possible exit for the current round of investors, or we could look at uh, uh, future investments from the uh, cash flow reserves. So these are there. Are, it opens up various opportunities for us. So this is the indicative uh, cash flow statement of the this thing. So we are looking at about uh, uh, fifteen to twenty crores of cash reserves by uh, 27, 28. Hey, Raghu, I have uh, one more uh, quick question. Yeah. Uh, so what are the export uh, prospects, uh, Raghu? Since uh, you know these exotic vegetables have a lot of market. Uh, 
Pete in uh, Middle East. Uh, I'm sure uh, Naresh would second that, and uh, even Europe and uh, even you know uh, South Asian countries like Maldives. So if you could just throw a little light on that, that will be very helpful. Absolutely. So we are. Uh, uh, so there is definitely a huge uh, export potential for exotics. So currently, if you look at the uh, uh, markets uh, that you mentioned, your Middle East and uh, uh, Singapore is a big market uh, because it uh, caters to entire uh, Southeast Asia and all these uh, island nations, right? So because they don't have their own produce, uh, the holiday destinations of your Maldives, Mauritius, etc. So these are uh, potential places. So uh, there is a huge potential. There are a couple of things that we need to do in terms of uh, exploiting this potential. One is, of course, getting the gap certification in place and moving towards a residue free or a, uh, and maybe to some extent a organic uh, produce uh, because the regulations in each country varies as to what kind of produce can be sold uh, locally. Uh, like Middle East is fairly liberal in terms of what they import, but a uh, place like Europe, it is uh, the most stringent in the world, right? So that is one of the things. The second one is the shelf life and uh, the logistics. Uh, so we need to ensure that there is, the product has enough shelf life to reach there. So one of the things that we are looking at is in terms of uh, the processing uh, uh, part of our uh, vertical, right? So the once we are able to process the vegetables, so uh, there could be a huge potential, especially with things like irradiation. Uh, the shelf life uh, increases uh, drastically, and it also gives us uh, the uh, uh, approvals for some of the uh, in some of the countries to automatically export. So those are the I think the growing methods will have to be explore, explored. So we are working on it on this in stages. So initially. We are working towards a gap certification. Then we will uh, go towards uh, either a US FDA or one of the uh, country specific regulations which allows us to export. But that's definitely something which is on the cards. Ragu Krishan here. <coughs> Sorry, ah, I was a bit late. Good to see you. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Very quickly, you meant processing, you meant packing, right? When uh, you said processing. Not not only packing. So one of the things that we are looking at is uh, uh, irradiation very seriously. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So right now, uh, the mangoes which are exported to US are all irradiated, but there is a huge potential to irradiate vegetables, exotic vegetables, uh, pack it and uh, sell it in these countries. So that's something that we are uh, exploring uh, uh, seriously. And uh, you meant organic. Uh, at present, do you have an approval to the existing form that it's completely no, no, organic? No, no. So, so it is not. Or what we are doing currently is not organic. And okay. in future also, we won't be getting into uh, the traditional definition of organic uh, in a full, uh, I mean, in a big way. What we are, we want to do it in stages. So initially, uh, we will go in for a gap certification, go in for achieve a residue-free uh, produce status. Yeah. Uh, over a period of time, we will add organic inputs. Uh, we'll replace the synthetic inputs with the organic inputs. And uh, uh, then, uh, I mean, depends on where we want to export. So based on the requirements over there, uh, we will accordingly uh, move to that particular growing method. Yeah, especially Singapore and Europe, yeah. they would be very, very keen on organic, uh, this one more. So something which you can look at it. Definitely, Krishna. Definitely. We'll look into that. Yeah, Shishi. Go ahead. All right. So <clears throat> now in terms of the compensation aspects of it, so here are the compensations for the management team. We talked about the business, how it works, different lines of models, and why are we doing this? What is in it for us? So we're trying to be extremely transparent in what is it for us. So we have a management sweat equity. Uh, this is an incentive for us to set up the whole enterprise. We have a 40.5% of the founder's sweat equity uh, by the end of 2028. And uh, for this, what we are bringing in is the years of experience on uh, implementing such projects and also the ability to raise this 12 crore out of multiple smaller investors. Uh, I'm not sure if we have mentioned our minimum investment earlier, did we? So far, I haven't remembered that. Uh, no, I think it was there in the investment slide. So we are looking at 
a minimum investment of uh, 10 lakh rupees and then uh, further with uh, tranches of uh, 5 lakhs additional tranches of 5 lakhs right so in this model any capping uh, ragu sorry chetan any capping uh, we are right now not uh, capping it but we are inclined to cap it at around uh, 50 lakhs uh, currently okay oh, got it got it thank you so the whole idea is to encourage more people coming with smaller number to really literally get into the crowdfunding. We are not looking at uh, current bulk crowds because we have lots of people who are interested in uh, to get it and fill up that number. But how do we become a 100 crore company, which means that we need to really have larger investments. So our idea is to uh, get smaller investments, smaller volume of, smaller amount of investment from a higher volume of investors. So for that, we need to create the platform. We need to create our credibility and everything. That's the reason the sweat equity for us is what we are uh, charging here. And uh, also- I think That's uh, self-explanatory. I'm sorry? That's self-explanatory, I said. Okay, that's good. That's good. <laughs> right. uh, so so what, few things, I mean, where we see everything written in a small star and a small fine print, we want it to be make it bold. So that you know we don't have a worry at a later point saying that you know these guys didn't disclose and then charge us this. Um, and the entire sweat equity is allotted in the form of equity shares. We have the full skin in the game. It's not the amount is taken up front. And uh, uh, as I mentioned, the full code worth is the preferred shares that are allotted to the investors, which means in, investors will get their money first before the founders team gets anything. So that's the skin in the game that we have uh, added here. And uh, the team compensation. Uh, once we raise the 12 crores, we need to still continue to raise to make this 100 crores company. So we have structured two different incentives, wherein one is the amount of capital raise. We take a 5% as a capital raise in the form of, again, the preferred, uh, in the form of the uh, shares. Again, that's wasted over a period of time. It's not the money we are taking to raise the uh, capital. It's in the form of uh, uh, shares that we are taking. At the same time, to increase the valuation of the company, because we could raise another 10 crores, but at a lower valuation, which means it's not giving anything to the investors. So to put our skin in the game, to put a challenge for us, we are taking on the differential valuation of 10% as a shares again. So for example, uh, we have raising the valuation from 20 crores to 50 crores. That's a 30 crore uh, uh, difference in the valuation. So we're taking 10% of that, which is a uh, uh, three crore as the uh, shares. So with this, it always keeps us on our toes to ensure that we are able to raise the capital, whereas we will raise the capital at the higher valuation. And we would be able to raise all this only if we are successful on the ground. So that's where we are all linking up everything to our performance. This is how we structure the uh, compensation part of it. Uh, any questions so far? Raghu, you mentioned that uh, initial investors will be allotted preference shares, convertible preference shares, right? right? Yes, yes. Okay, and this conversion is post five years. Post five years. You mentioned five years. Talking correct, about. correct, correct. Yeah. Okay, and uh, at the end of six years, preference shareholder has option either to have a cash draw or get equity stake. Uh, no, right now we are saying it will be a, a compulsory convertible to equity. The cash draw we'll have to look at based on the uh, uh, situation at that particular time. Okay, thank you. That's a um, secondary option, right, Raghu? Yes, yes, yes. Go ahead, Gigi. Okay. Um, also, we're trying, this is a slide where we talk about our business disclosures. Each of us have our own businesses. For example, I, me as Sashi, I have my ag tech company here in the US. Raghu has his own uh, other uh, organization. So what we're trying to say is we have other businesses. At the same time, we have 40% equity in the company that we're forming. So we have complete skin in the game. And uh, we will not, we will ensure that there is no conflicts across all these businesses. We will actually ensure that there is a great collaboration uh, with, with these businesses. 
And uh, um, one thing that I have noticed here in the US is everything has to be disclosed. There cannot be anything that is uh, kind of given as, uh, yeah, the people will understand. So I'm following that and we are disclosing everything that we are into as founders and uh, just want to ensure the investors are aware of what we have uh, along with these companies. Raghu, one more question here. Yes, sir. Shashi, Shashi mentioned that uh, at 100 crore valuation, mm. the promoters will have, management team rather, will have 40% stake. Yeah. Out of this 40%, how much is going to be brought in by way of cash and how much will, of it will be in valuation? Most of it would be in the form of sweat equity. We are bringing in only the initial uh, capital for the company formation and the uh, uh, initial activities, roughly about uh, all of uh, all four of us put together, we'll probably initially bring in about uh, 10 to 15 lakhs in terms of cash. And over a period of time, uh, we will have to, I mean, in case there is a requirement, we will uh, pitch in uh, with the uh, additional funds. So uh, one of the co-founders, uh, Mr. Adishesh, would be bringing in additional capital and he'll also be uh, part of the preference share pool. So anything that we are uh, bringing in uh, outside of the sweat equity, we'll also be part of the preference share pool. Okay, thank you. Yes, yes, go ahead. And this slide is about business continuity in the governance. So far, it looks like there are four people who's running the show. Uh, while this is the core team that's going to be, we wanted to ensure that they, we have uh, a complete set of uh, governance in place. Uh, in terms of board of directors, as we are going to have two more people from the investors, we would be, uh, these board of directors would have uh, powers along with us to ensure that everything is going on in order. And we will also be expanding the team uh, beyond us to ensure that we are able to expand the company to the 100 crores level. So we'll expand the management team there. And uh, in terms of the governance of company, we will have checks and balances for all the spends. We will have, uh, we will define so far, here we have defined that any expense above one crore will have to be approved by multiple board members and uh, so on. So the idea is that it's not going to be run as a team, just four of us. We will have complete transparency and we have uh, complete checks and balances uh, to run it as a professional company, which is completely transparent there. Any questions so far on that? Uh, Raghu, apart from four of you, yeah, is there going to be any sweat equity allotment to the ground level workers? Uh, right now, no. But uh, especially if we are able to bring in people uh, with in specialized areas, right? Uh, right? Like for example, it could be uh, the hospitality part of it. If uh, we see a big potential, we we have very limited skill sets on the hospitality part of it. So we might bring in somebody uh, in the hospitality area if that is doing very well to grow that part of the business. Even on the agriculture side, uh, when it comes to things like uh, food processing or trading, there could be people uh, who we can uh, bring in and uh, 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 issue sweat equity uh, to them. But uh, right now, uh, it is going to be just the four of us. All those people who are helping you in farming, there is yeah. no proposal to no, give no. up at this point of time. Uh, no, no, no. Thank you. Rago, one thought, now that you're going to expand in a big way, yeah. I think uh, an agriculture specialist, either by way of an agronomist or somebody, would help a lot. Absolutely. Maybe, I think, even as a consultant, even if there's no... Yeah, yeah. Person. So, we have... Uh, we have yeah, so we have provisioned for that, uh, Krishna. So we have provisioned for, uh, you know, so especially when we have about 28 acres of uh, greenhouse, we definitely need a full-time agronomist who will be working with us. So initially, it will be a consultant who will be who will be hiring as an agronomist. But over a period of time, we have budgeted for a full-time uh, agronomist to work with us. Yeah, I, I have some suggestions. Maybe later we'll take it up and you know him also. Sure. And some of them who are on the verge of retiring will be far more effective and efficient, even from a cost perspective, we can look at it. True, true, true. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Shashi? Yeah, you can move to the next slide, guys. 
so in terms of periodic reporting, we will have all the activity updates up almost like very dynamic. We'll use uh, different portals, WhatsApp, FB, and any communication methods. Financial status updates would be every quarter on the last Saturday of the quarter. And uh, general body statutory updates is going to be once a year on December, in the uh, third, third Saturday of the December. So uh, this is going to be with a multiple modes of communication. But the, our idea is that every investor will have the information of the farm and their fingertips. They would understand exactly things that are happening and uh, any of these uh, financial updates, we would update on a quarterly basis. Um, everything what we discussed so far is in the, mentioned here in the form of a project summary. It's going to be a repetition of all that we talked about. Uh, instead of going through, maybe we should go through any questions and uh, make it open for everybody to ask any questions. Right. I was uh, say that. So. Bro, I joined late. Uh, if I can ask a few questions, of course, first of all, uh, I didn't know the team doesn't matter. I'll yeah, Krishnan, uh, maybe you should start by introducing yourself. Uh, so that's oh, how we started. So please okay. uh, introduce okay. yourself, Krishnan. First of all, a very good friend of Raghu. <laughs> Mentor. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, uh, actually, I, my name is Krishan, and uh, I'm actually more into the biotech space. I've been uh, working for a Danish company. We are into industrial enzymes, and uh, we are the market leaders in the world and also India. I formally retired, and I continue to be the advisor for Novozymes in India. Apart from that, I'm also into advising one of the companies from US, a startup again, who are into alternative protein, as you all might know what they call the smart protein or alternative protein. So I'm into that. Plus a few local companies where I'm on the advisory and also one uh, IT company where I'm part of the family board of one of the organizations. So my background is predominantly biotechnology and I would say sales and marketing and general management is the area for me. And uh, I know Raghu for a long time now and uh, definitely looking forward to this. So that's about me. And uh, the questions which I wanted to ask is you were all looking at multiple investors. Now, today we have about 14 or 15 people, I think the select few whom you have invited. What's your thought on how you're going to propagate for a few more? Is it some of us can go ahead and then organize something, a group of five or 10 uh, who would be interested in that, or you have a different plan altogether? Uh, uh, yeah, Krishnan. So currently for the round 1A, which is the first uh, three crores of uh, investment, we more or less have uh, commitments for that. Uh, so, but uh, uh, this is something that we would definitely uh, look for. So like Shashi mentioned earlier, uh, the process of raising funds uh, has to be continuous in for us to scale and uh, increase the valuation over a period of time. So this is definitely something that we would be looking at and uh, uh, as assistance from the uh, existing investors. Uh, uh, there, uh, I would like to take, there was a question actually, I think Raghu, uh, you had asked a question uh, in the Google form saying that if the existing investors would get the first right for the next round of investments as well that we yes, yes, definitely yes. have to do it uh, because that's a rights issue that we have to give the preference to the existing investors and only if they say no then we go to the additional investors so that will happen at uh, every uh, stage so krishnan yes uh, so your uh, the answer to your question is both uh, uh, no and yes, no for the first round, uh, uh, round 1A, but round 1B onwards, definitely that's something that uh, we will look forward to. Sure. Thank you. Welcome, Trishna. You had some more questions. Please feel free to. Raghu, one, uh, this might uh, sound very stupid. Uh, no, Chetan, you can. Uh, Raghu. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead, Chetan. Chetan, you are on mute. No, no, I said, you know, who are your attorneys? Which law firm you are using? Uh, so, for uh, we are using uh, three law firms currently. Uh, so, the law firm for uh, the land, uh, due diligence of the land and uh, legal opinion, registration, etc. 
we are going with a lawyer based in uh, mysore by name mr uh, sudhakar and uh, we are uh, uh, getting another opinion from uh, uh, hari krishna who runs uh, 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 a law firm in uh, bangalore uh, for the uh, lead, uh, the capital structuring the uh, the fundraise etc we are uh, talking to hemant of uh, lks ஒரு <laughs> okay yeah. okay that's good uh, the quick question maybe again i missed out uh, the expansion is around the same area where you already have the existing facility uh, yeah so this is about half an hour from our existing uh, facility so this is about 3 kilometers uh, uh, before uh, jungle lodge uh, king sanctuary uh, in nagarhode that's the first project the second and th- uh, third project would be closer to bangalore so we would uh, 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 uh look at lands closer to bangalore because one from a appreciation point of view two also from a logistics and uh, uh especially for a nursery business we would need something like a exhibition center and uh, uh, a place where uh, the farmers are uh, bulk of the farmers are located so the second and third project would be closer to bangalore okay and uh, of course uh... main part on the water and everything you will look at it oh, absolutely so the current one actually uh, the land is amazing in terms of uh, both the uh, soil and water so there are currently three bore wells the land is completely fenced and there is water available at right about uh, 50 feet of course uh, because of the unusual rains this year uh in fact uh, the uh, water table has come to about 5 foot 10 feet so uh there is uh, enough water and uh, uh, the other thing is because we are into uh, precision agriculture and hydroponics the water usage would be significantly less compared to say uh, open farm so that's something that we are more sustainable yeah yes, definitely more sustainable and uh Uh, you are not looking at anywhere around the Uti area. You are getting closer to Nagarhole. Ah, uh, yeah. Right now, the first round will be uh, closer to Nagarhole. So there is a close friend of mine who keeps pushing me to uh, buy land near Uti because uh, he says that's the best uh, climate uh, yeah. and the soil for exotics, especially. So that's something that we will definitely look at uh, in uh, round two. Yes. Great. Sashi, uh, you can probably go to yeah. So this is the project summary. So Krishnan, uh, for uh, since you came in a little later, uh, uh, and also Shravan is here. Shravan, maybe a ten second introduction. Oh yeah. Hi Raghu and hi everyone. so i, I think uh, i love the way krishnan introduced so i would like to introduce myself as a, a dear friend of ragu <laughs> and the other thing is uh, i run a consulting firm into sustainability domain i'm very passionate about sustainability and net zero advisory is what we do for our corporate clients that's a brief introduction about myself thank you thank you thank you shravan so shravan uh, and krishnan uh, uh, since you came in slightly later maybe these two slides uh are there some project summary slides so maybe you can spend a little time on this and in the meantime i have uh, uh in the uh, chat box i have given the link a link to a, a google form so this is the uh, investment interest form and also a feedback on uh, this particular session so if uh, uh, so request all of you to please uh, click on that link and fill up the Form if you have not done so already. So Raghu, the homestay seem to be very attractive. Where is it? Ah, uh, so the same place, Krishnan. So this Home, is uh, Nagarhole. Nagarhole, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so good. yeah, uh, there was. Uh, I think 
uh, Raghu and uh, 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 so, yeah, so uh, Raghu, you in the uh, and Naresh probably uh, were not there when we projected that slide, Shashi. So maybe you can go back to the farmacation slide. So we made some changes in that. So let me see. This one? No, no, no. The farmacation slide. Oh, I think it's taking a little time to lag. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. This is the one. Okay. So, Krishna, this is uh, this is our plan for the homestay. Very good. Great. So we'll be okay. we'll be posting the recording of this uh, session as well. So in the meantime, any I think we are more or less uh, yeah okay. I think this is the other slide. So what is the current status and the way forward? So the company incorporation is in progress. We have got the name approval. We have filed for the company incorporation. In the next couple of days, we should have the company incorporated. So uh, in the chat box, I have put in the uh, interest form. So please uh, fill that up. And uh, uh, we are looking to close the round 1A in uh, July. So the request for uh, uh, money will come in uh, June and uh, we'll close it in uh, July including the allotment of the preference shares. Uh, the shareholders agreement is in the process of being drafted. So we will uh, run it through all of you before we uh, send it out for uh, signatures. In terms of the land itself, the due diligence is in progress and uh, the, um, uh, the advocate in Mysore has given us uh, in principle okay, uh, oral in principle okay for going ahead with the transaction. We are waiting for a couple of documents and also to uh, the survey to uh, close the process, uh, post which he'll be giving a written opinion. Uh, and we will back that up with the second round of opinion as well. Our target is to register the land uh, on uh, August 15th. I mean, August 15th being a holiday, we may not be able to register it by August, on August 15th, but on and around, I mean, in and around August 15th is when we are looking to register the land. With all these plans, we cannot give you independence, uh, Raghu. <laughs> exactly. Raghu, is this land, Raghu, is this land a single owner or more than one uh, owner? So it is uh, technically one owner. So there are uh, four people uh, who, uh, the, there is a main owner who has registered the land in four uh, names. Uh, so we have got the documents for all four uh, names. So we are doing the transaction together. We are not buying it in uh, part. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any uh, roads in, like uh, between the land or any any kind of path, uh, like something for public uh, place? Yeah. 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 So this land, uh, there is no public road or anything like that. So there is. Uh, just the approach road uh, from the Nagarhole main road, which is, uh, and this land is about 100 meters from the approach road. Uh, of course, that approach road itself is uh, 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 a mud road currently. Uh, so inside there is, uh, this is a single piece of 15.6 acres. So there's no public land within that. Of course, when we do the survey, we will get the final, uh, this thing, but based on the village map and the lawyer's opinion, uh, there is no public road or anything like that. Okay. Okay, thanks. Raghu, and then uh, you said the minimum investment is 10 lakhs, right? Yes, Krishna. Okay. After 10 lakhs, it is in uh, multiples of 5 lakhs. Okay. And cap is something we'll get back, Raghu? Is that what you said? Yes, yes. Cap is uh, something that we will get back. Okay, so that's the end of our presentation. Uh, Raghu, what could be the next steps? You said everybody has to fill in the Google form that you have presented yeah. to them. And um, we will share the recording with everybody who have joined. And any disclaimers that you want to make, Raghu, not to share it with in public or how do you want to do that? Uh, 
uh nothing immediately we'll keep you i think uh, all of you are already part of the whatsapp group that uh, we have created uh so uh i think based on the google uh form filled in today and uh, uh, the next couple of days we will restrict the uh, whatsapp group only to the people who are making the first round of investment so that we can give you a uh, regular updates on the current status and uh, uh, when we plan to raise the funds uh, etc all the best ragu and anywhere anything you think i can do out of this to support let me know thank you krishnan thank you we look forward to your support thanks a lot okay bye bye thanks krishnan thank, thank you, you ragu everyone. yeah thank yeah. you ragu thank you shashi for ragu, an excellent presentation you know, uh, wherever uh, krishnan sir is there it's a sure shot 5x <laughs> absolutely yeah <laughs> that's why i'm insistent that krishnan has to be a part of this <laughs> i i don't know what this means chetan <laughs> I'll, i'll talk to you later <laughs> <laughs> sure <good. laughs> okay. Okay. okay guys i'm leaving now uh, thank you thank you okay everyone thank you. Thank you. Thank you. yeah yeah thank you ragu thank you bye thank you bye thank you thanks guys thanks guys for joining hi ragu